protons, 92 protons, means you have a neutron in there. So you got to learn what's really going on with this, because most people would say Neptunium is bigger than uranium. But uranium-239 is more massive than Neptunium-239. You got to really work at this till you can learn it. It can be learned, though. That's why I'm hoping these little cartoon characters do it for you. So there's, that was the Glenn Seaborg Cal Berkeley reaction that they did. What do we got here? We'll just run on down the line. We'll do some more of our nuclear stuff here. We want you to put full screen mode. Now this is what Madame Curie's daughter and Juliet in France did. This was pretty remarkable. Now they're shooting alpha particles. Two protons, two neutrons. We call these alpha fishies. Alpha particle is the alpha fish, letter alpha. Huh? Two protons, two neutrons. You shoot that into an aluminum. Aluminum only has one kind of isotope, a 27. 13 protons, 14 neutrons. Remember our chart of the nuclides? 100% isotopes are aluminum are the 27 isotope. So if you shoot a alpha particle, two protons is going to make this from a 13 to a 15, which is going to make it a phosphorus atom. You got a 27 and you add a four, it's going to be a 31. And that's what the predominant isotope of phosphorus is. But what the Curies found was you didn't get phosphorus 31. You got a phosphorus that kicked out a neutron. This gave it a phosphorus 30, which was easy to detect and compare because all the other phosphorus that you naturally find in the world is going to be a 31. This, again, is 100% isotope of aluminum is in a 27 mass. 100% of the phosphorus is a 31. So what did they find? One, they were able to detect a neutron coming out. I want to show how helpful these cartoons are because this three ring structured double bonds in here where do you think this comes from this is just like the centipede isn't it molybdenum molybdenum there are enzymes all the metals that you see as being essential elements you see a lot of them are metals that's because that metal ion is held in the middle of a big old thing like a Chlorophyll is held, photosynthesis. Iron is held in uh, hemoglobin. Magnesium, chlorophyll. See how these metals? Well, molybdenum is held in enzymes that have these kind of structures. Does this look like the centipede? Looks like the B2 centipede. Nitrogens are in the same place. Electron acceptor, when these double bonds in the rings can come and go. We have some new diagrams we drew on that you can look at next time because these double bonds are actually coming out in space. They're pi bonds. So drawing it flat like this to a weathered chemist is okay. But for beginners, it, it's totally misleading because you got to realize that this double bond here, a double bond between these carbons, there's two electrons for the single bond, but that pi bond is up in the air, above and below. So there's a three-dimensionality to this. So again, this is used in a lot of your molybdenum-holding enzymes. And again, go to the website, and you can read up all about this, because there isn't time here. And what do we have? Two more for your enjoyment here. We've got... See the way the cartoon comes in? I've seen these big, long molecules. 
This is from a vitamin. This is from the ribose holding the adenine. Hmm? Adenine, this is methionine. This is actually amino acid with the sulfur on it. So see, instead of seeing all these as just C's and O's and S's and stuff, this is one group. So this group had come together to form the sulfur to hold that group back there. A lot of these are in your electron degradation reactions, as they call it. So methionine, that's a nice amino acid there. And lastly, we're going to wrap this up here because our time is up. This is our nucleic acids again. Two hydrogen bonds, three hydrogen bonds. Double ring, single ring, double ring, single ring. So you see the way these come together. And what I'm proud of is the color coding. Red for adenine, ruby, ruby red, curly hair. Ruby goes out with Ricky. So I prefer RNA, so that's why the uracil here instead of the thiamine. Blue, he's got the spiked hair and see how he's upside down and backwards. So this shows how these are complementary strands, but three bonds, this is why C, G, T and A or U and A, A won't bond with this because the double ring is there, the double ring is there. If you brought this up, it'd be backwards, so you wouldn't get the plus coming in. You'd have minuses going against. So that's why these bonds are so specific. And see now how you can run these along in your long DNA molecules, but by the color coding, the riboses are the sugars with a phosphate in between holding them, called these phosphoflowers. The riboses are either picking or kicking up and down holding the phosphates, and then the other hand is holding the nucleic acid. Three hydrogen bonds, two hydrogen bonds. And this shows which is holding the electron. That's why I like that. The electron pairs are there. The plus is the proton. So it shows which, some will show the three and the doubles, but you don't know which side is holding what because this proton is bouncing in between electron pairs. But if you split it up, that proton would go where it's a hydrogen, but when it's in that hydrogen bond, it's just a proton bouncing in between two electron pairs. My time's up. Learn as much as you can, as I say. It's been Cosmic Ray, the quantum mechanic. When your laws of Newtonian physics fall apart, call the quantum mechanic. I guess there's actually like two minutes left on this. So again, the phosphates, see, remember when we were talking about the bond on the phosphorus here? Two, four, lone pair, six, eight electrons, double bond, huh? Phosphoflowers, phosphates, ribose, five-membered sugars, if there's an OH, it's RNA. If that OH is gone, deoxy, they make the name longer when the OH is missing. OH is what makes it a sugar. It's an alcoholic group, OH, but they call it a sugar. So ribose is a sugar. If that OH is on there, it's an RNA. And that's what you find with the uracil here. This is the ribose will be OH'd an alcoholic ribose here. Deoxys, not as interesting, I don't think. I think RNA is the happening one. So C, is this colorful? I mean, this is fun. I can see kindergartners wanting to learn this. So Ricky Ribose, that's our new cartoon character. So hope you learned something. God bless. <laughs>